question is on the amendment by the gentlewoman from North Carolina. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. No. In the opinion, Chair, the no's have it, and the amendment's not agreed to. The um, gentlewoman asked for a recorded vote. A roll call vote is ordered. Pursuant to the Chair's previous announcement, this, this vote will be postponed. Yeah. We now move to consider the next bill. The committee will now proceed to consideration of, eight of the resolution, res resolution HJ Res 165 for amendment. The resolution was circulated in advance and printed copies are available. The clerk shall designate the resolution. HJ Res 165, providing for congressional disapproval under Chapter 8 of Title V, United States Code, of the rule submitted by the Department of Education relating to non-discrimination on the basis of sex and education programs or activities receiving federal financial assistance. Without objection, the first reading of the resolution is dispensed with um, are there members who wish to be recognized for further discussion on the resolution? Ms. Miller, you are recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. In 1972, Congress enacted Title IX with the goal of giving our girls and women more opportunities, not biological men. Since then, Title IX has paved the way for our girls to access new opportunities in education, scholarships, and athletics. Unfortunately, Joe Biden is destroying all that progress. I am proud to be leading the effort to overturn Joe Biden's unlawful and radical reinterpretation of Title IX. Joe Biden and his Democrat enablers in Congress claim that the Supreme Court's ruling in Bostock makes their interpretation of Title IX legitimate. This is a lie. The Supreme Court specifically said in their ruling that Bostock should not be applied to Title IX or any civil rights law. But they don't care. They're stripping students, educators, and parents of their legal rights. Joe Biden has made it illegal to disagree with the radical left's view of gender. This is a blatant violation of students and educators' free speech rights. And worst of all, this rule enshrines in law the left's ongoing war against parental rights. This rule also doubles down on the radical left's attack on biology, at the same time that medical associations around the world are waking up to the harm that's being done by these policies. The American people, they are fed up with men taking away the athletic opportunities from our girls and they're horrified at the prospect of our girls having to be sh having to shower with men and share the locker room with them. Democrats are telling us loud and clear they don't care about our girls. And if you disagree, Joe Biden is going to punish you and take federal money away from your schools. Madam Chair, my Democrat colleagues have said that overturning this rule would be an act of hate. I say that Joe Biden's Title IX rule is an act of hate. Someone must stand up and say enough, and I'm glad we're doing that today. Thank you. I urge adoption of this rule, and I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Um, are there other members who wish to speak? You. Thank you. you want to speak or say anything? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Ms. Bonamici, you're recognized for five minutes. Uh, th thank you very much, um, Madam Chair. I move to strike the last word. You're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Under the previous administration, Secretary DeVos advanced a discriminatory and a harmful misinterpretation of Title IX. Her approach diminished the rights of survivors of sexual assault and also failed to enforce civil rights protections for LGBTQ plus students. The Biden administration has worked hard to fix this mixed guided policy and the proposed regulations take into account hours of listening sessions and more than 150,000 public comments. The new Title IX rule strengthens protections for vulnerable student populations, including the LGBTQ community, and for the first time, Title IX explicitly prohibits discrimination 
based on sexual orientation and gender identity. The Bostock case was a civil rights case. The regulations also strike the right balance between maintaining due process rights for offenders and protecting survivors of sex-based harassment and assault, something that the former department failed to do. The department's proposed regulations are timely and necessary, especially following the Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs, which decimated reproductive rights and access to abortion for individuals nationwide. Lack of access to adequate reproductive care affects educational opportunities, career outcomes, and earning potential, and the effects are disproportionately felt by black, brown, and low-income students. In short, Title IX, the Title IX rule fulfills the federal government's responsibility to protect students and staff from discrimination on the basis of sex, empowering them to thrive academically and professionally. Invoking the Congressional Review Act is not only unnecessary, but deeply harmful. It shows students and staffs that we do not consider their rights worthy of protection and their identities worthy of respecting. I encourage my colleagues to vote, all of my colleagues, to vote against this harmful resolution and reject all attacks on Title IX, and I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, Ms. Bonamici. Mr. Scott. Thank you're, you, Madam. You're recognized for thank, five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first, I'd like to point out that these, this um, rule does not speak to eligibility to sports. Uh, that issue will be taken up in a later rule. Title IX prohibits discrimination in education on the basis of sex, whether my colleagues like it or not. Uh, the Trump appointed Justice Neil Gorsuch held that protections of Title VII of the Civil Rights Act against workforce <laughs> discrimination because of sex must be interpreted to include discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. The court, in the wake of that opinion, in the case of Bostock of the Clayton County, had the opportunity to hear cases that raised the question as to whether or not the same interpretation holds for Title IX. Lower courts have held that it does. The Supreme Court has refused to hear appeals on those cases, letting those interpretations stand. So to the extent my colleagues have a problem with the rule before us based on the interpretation of sex, that problem does not lie with the Department of Education, but with the Supreme Court. Further, I find it baffling that this committee has spent six months and over five hearings investigating the existence of hostile learning environments in education settings and then decides to bring the CRA bill to the committee for reasons they have publicly stated. We know that LGBTQI students experience disproportionate harassment and discrimination while trying to learn and grow up like every other student simply because of who they are. Title IX rule in question today will provide critical protections for students so that they can learn in an environment free from discrimination, harassment, and violence. This is something my colleagues have been uh, demanding for certain groups of students, and as lawmakers, we should be demanding it for all students, regardless of their race, national origin, shared ancestry, sex, sexual orientation, or gender identity. So I urge my colleagues to vote no on this joint resolution, and you'll back the balance of my time. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Ms. McLean, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I speak in support of House Joint Resolution 165 to block President Biden's attempt to undermine Title IX and erase vital protections for women and girls in American schools. Title IX was created to ensure women and girls have the same educational opportunities as boys in school across the country. As Title IX enters its 52nd year, its legacy for fostering fair competition, fair competition and education for women is under attack by the radical left. Title IX was meant to give girls the space they needed to showcase their skills. Instead of honoring this legacy, the Biden administration and the bureaucracy of the Department of Education is hell-bent on, on harming the very women Title IX was placed to, in, to protect. The rule to redefine sex discrimination on the basis of 
gender identity will force schools to provide biological men who claim they are women access to women's locker rooms and bathrooms. This ignores the biological differences between men and women and puts our daughters, my daughters, in grave danger. This joint resolution is about protecting our daughters and their ability to learn and compete in a safe environment. President Biden has proven that he will do anything to appease the radicals in his party rather than defend the success of women athletes and Title IX. Our daughters deserve better. Your daughters deserve better. And we owe it to them to fight for the sanctity of women to have safe spaces. I'll make it simple for the Democrats. Men do not belong in women's spaces. The fact that I need to say that is a sad reflection of where the other side is on this aisle. The simple fact is that we are here today because the Biden administration is putting leftist policies over the protection of our daughters, of our women and our girls. If the Biden administration goes down this path, it will mean more women, it will mean more women will lose out on academics and athletics. Since when are we so discriminatory against women? I don't understand that. I mean, they should have opportunities. Women and girls should have opportunities that were afforded to them under Title IX. Remember, we fought so hard for Title IX, for women. Right? Remember the women's lib generation, right? I am proud to co-sponsor this common sense legislation and to urge my colleagues, support your daughters and vote for this legislation. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I yield back. Mr. Good, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move to strike the last word. On a you're recognized for five minutes. On April 29, 2024, the Department of Ed released a rule changing Title IX of the Education Amendment of 1972 to include sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, and the definition of sex. With a stroke of a pen, the Biden administration destroyed Title IX's promises of equal opportunity for women and, and eradicated sex-protected spaces like bathrooms, locker rooms, and campus housing for students from kindergarten through grad school. The, to, to the Title IX rule forces schools, forces schools to adopt the left's radical worldview that sex is something that can change on a whim, something that's chosen or decided, as opposed to it being scientifically embedded in our DNA. Of course, the folks on the other side, the Democrat Party supports young children self-diagnosing gender dysphoria and then adults' ability to abuse them, young children, via puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and even surgery to forever maim them, disfigure them for the rest of their life. It's clear from this rule that the left would rather perpetrate the harm of gender confusion than stand up for women and girls. Unless Congress or the courts intervene, the Biden administration's rule will go into effect on August 1, so next year, don't be surprised when you see more boys joining girls' sports teams. And you can thank President Biden when your daughter finds out that her freshman roommate is actually a man. Brace yourself for the onslaught of investigations at the De Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights when teachers and students who refuse to use non-biological pronouns are reported. So I thank Representative Miller for her courage, her leadership, and her effort, her relentless effort, to protect women and girls in locker rooms, defend women in sports, and to follow the science, the God-created science, 
And I'm proud to support this legislation. I urge all of my colleagues to nullify the Biden administration's rule by supporting H.J. Res. 165, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Good. Mr. Moran, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairwoman Fox. I move to strike the last word. You're recognized. Today, I rise in support of uh, House Joint Resolution 165, introduced by my colleague, Representative Mary Miller from Illinois. I come with deep concerns regarding the Biden administration's Department of Education final rule released on May 3rd, 2024, regarding Title IX that redefines sex to include, quote, sexual orientation and gender identity. This rule blatantly disregards the longstanding interpretation of the word sex, undermines the intended mission of Title IX, and removes protections for women and girls in our education system. The Biden administration's Title IX rule belies the legislative intent of the statute, which was to ensure equal access to educational and athletic opportunities for women on campuses, and this new rule unfortunately achieves the exact opposite. Title IX was written with the understanding that there are two distinct sexes, male and female. This foundational biological truth, if unwound, makes Title IX protections irrelevant and unnecessary. The final rule issued by the Department of Education, which redefines sex to include sexual orientation and gender identity, blatantly ignores years of precedent and only creates more confusion for institutions. It blurs the lines of biology, of statutory construction, and of common sense. What's more, this rule rolls back years of advancements for women and girls in education like my two daughters and erodes the fundamental principles and purposes of Title IX. Egregiously, this rule goes so far as to withhold funds to schools if they do not allow students to use restrooms or locker rooms based on their proclaimed gender identity. This unprecedented rule is dangerous and is another example of the administration ignoring the will of parents, children, and local school districts, not to mention common sense and the natural laws of this world. This blatant government overreach in search of a radical social agenda rooted in moral relativism is unacceptable to me as a father and as a legislator. And I urge my colleagues to vote in favor of this resolution to roll back the Biden administration's ill-conceived attempt to further blur the lines between men and women. With that, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Moran. Uh, Dr. Adams, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move to strike the last word. You're recognized. I rise in opposition to this resolution. We cannot allow this attempt at fear-mongering overshadow how groundbreaking this new rule is for so many students in our country. These changes provide much-needed clarification on, on what schools are obligated to do in cases of sexual harassment and discrimination. They strengthen the requirement for schools to respond promptly and equitably in their investigations. They also significantly strengthen protections for pregnant and parenting students. These regulations require schools to provide pregnant students with information on the school's obligations and accommodations they must offer, including voluntary leaves of absence and lactation spaces. They also explicitly prohibit discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. As a professor of 40 years, I deeply value the role that, that education has in student lives. And every student deserves a quality education, free of harassment and discrimination. This final rule is an excellent step in the right direction for our students, and, and I'm proud to support it, and I yield back um, the balance of my time, Madam Chair. The gentlewoman yields back. Mr. Takano, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move to strike the last word and rise in opposition to this resolution. You're recognized for five minutes. Uh, the Department of Education issued a final rule this past April. This rule is a triumph. It strengthens protections against sex-based harassment and clarifies protections for LGBTQI plus uh, pregnant and parenting students. This rule makes significant strides in repairing the damage that the Trump administration's Title IX rule established. Under the DeVos Department of Ed, a lack of explicit protections and enforcement powers excluded many women, LGBTQ, and 
pregnant and parenting students from the full freedom to pursue a quality education. The Republican objection that sex discrimination should be interpreted to include sexual orientation and gender identity will tear down all of the protections that this essential rule clarifies. Let's be clear, the Title IX rule does not create new rights for LGBTQ plus students, but simply clarifies how the US Supreme Court decision in Bostock v. Clayton County should be interpreted in school environments. This is a population of students in need. Currently, 83% of LGBTQ plus students, LGBTQI plus students, face victimization at school. States with laws that target LGBTQI plus students have seen the number of hate crimes quadruple in the last five years, or the last few years. And, and, and this is a youth population that has among the highest statistics of anxiety, depression, suicidality, and youth homelessness. It is our obligation to support these kids and defend their right to what every child in America should have, access to a high quality education free from fear and victimization. Instead, my colleagues across the aisle have chosen to use their bully pulpit to ensure that LGBTQI plus kids do not have the same rights and freedoms as their peers. They are going out of the way to remove all the protections this rule offers through this CRA and all to dispute the definition of a single phrase. This CRA would have disastrous consequences for countless students that saw their right to education dissolve under the Trump Title IX rule. Survivors of sexual harassment and assault will continue to face significant barriers to completing their education if this CRA comes to pass. This CRA is a roadmap not only to wipe out the entire rule, but also tie the hands of a federal agency from undertaking any federal rulemaking related to these topics. This is a cruel, dangerous, and shameful waste of this committee's time during Pride Month nonetheless. I urge opposition to the joint resolution, and I yield back, Madam Chair. The gentleman yields back. I recognize myself for five minutes. Um, it's very disturbing to hear um, some of the comments that are being made about this resolution and what was done under the Trump administration. The Biden administration's rule says that men must be given access to girls' locker rooms, bathrooms, and athletic teams. By stating that schools' obligations to comply with Title IX is not alleviated by FERPA, the rule will seemingly force school districts to adopt the pernicious practice of hiding information from parents about their children's medical and emotional health. Democrats are saying that this rule doesn't affect women's sports. That's not true. While the Department of Education is sitting on a separate regulation dealing specifically with athletics, which it will presumably release after the election, the Biden administration is already working hard to rip athletic opportunities away from women and girls. <laughs> this rule we're debating today ex includes no carve-out for athletics. The Biden administration also intervened in a court case in West Virginia in opposition to a state law ensuring that only biological women would participate in women's sports. To be clear, this rule is not about protecting LGBTQ students from sexual harassment. Title IX already does that. I'm going to repeat that. Title IX already protects LGBTQ students. <clears throat> As the Trump administration wrote in the preamble to its 2020 Title IX regulations, <clears throat> the Department of Education will not tolerate sexual harassment against any student, including LGBTQ students. No, this rule is about forcing children, their parents, and their schools to accept the left's dangerous and radical gender ideology. 
the left's blatant and intentional attempts to redefine our sons' and daughters' identities by questioning biology itself has already done significant harm to our children and society. It will do even more if this rule stands. <coughs> the rule is also wrong legally. The Biden administration justifies its interpretation of Title IX by pointing to the Supreme Court's ruling in Bo Bostock versus Clayton County, Bostock. However, as Mrs. Miller has already said, the Biden administration ignores the Supreme Court's own explicit warning against interpreting Bostock opinion as applying to Title IX or other civil rights laws protecting sex discrimination. In that case, the court stated, quote, but none of these other laws are before us. We have not had the benefit of adversarial testing about the meaning of their terms, and we do not prejudge any such question today. Under Title VII, too, we do not purport to address bathrooms, locker rooms, or anything else of the kind. In addition, this rule violates the Supreme Court's major questions doctrine. In West Virginia versus EPA, the Supreme Court prohibited agencies from resolving questions of, quote, vast economic and political significance, unquote, without clear statutory authorizations. There are other troubling provisions in the regulation. Hidden within the pages is an attack on the First Amendment. The rule will force students and educators to accept the left's radical anti-science views of biology or be punished. The rule's expansion of what constitutes sexual harassment will further stifle free students' free speech rights. The rule strips due process rights from students accused of violating sexual harassment policies. The rule allows institutions to return to single investigator models in which one staff member serves as investigator, judge, and jury. The rule eliminates the rights of students on college campuses to a live hearing in which competing claims can be fairly evaluated and access to evidence for the accused has been curtailed. I yield back. To HR, H. R. H. J. Res. 165, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the resolution is agreed to. And that, chair, can I enter something into the record at this point? With, well, I just want the without record. Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized out of turn to put I, I just, something I just in the want, record. I just want to clarify something, because the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is in Virginia, uh, ruled that a tran a policies that segregate transgender students and deny them accurate transcripts are unconstitutional and violate Title IX, and I, I just want to clarify that. If the gentlewoman would like, the gentlewoman's time's expired, but the gentlewoman wants to enter that into I the record. I will enter she something into the so. record about that. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Chair. Mr. Scott, you're recognized. And did we get a recorded vote on the resolution? Um, a recorded vote uh, has been requested. A recorded vote will be uh, later in the process. The committee will now proceed to the consideration of the res. Excuse me. Oops. The committee now proceed to the consideration.